All right, so CTV News claims that the SPCA has reported that these criminal charges on the Radier in St. Jude Fur Farm is a first in Quebec. Despite the fact that in the same newscast, they mentioned that he was already charged 20 years ago for this. So let's listen. It is a first in Quebec. A fur farmer has been charged with animal cruelty. Jean-Luc Claudier of Saint-Jude in the Montérégie is charged with keeping minks and foxes in small, overcrowded cages in squalid conditions. When the SPCA discovered that some animals were in such poor shape, they had to be put down. Rob Lurie reports. This video was shot in August and shows what the SPCA describes as horrifying conditions. 90 foxes and 10,000 minks cooped up in tiny cages. Just seeing, you know, these what, virtually wild animals living in tiny cages, um, you know, going crazy, circling around and around, uh, living on piles of excrement and urine. We're talking about ammonia smells that were burning my eyes. And Technology is not always perfect. My throat and these animals are forced to live in these conditions year round. Today, the owner of the farm, Jean-Luc Rouillet, was avoiding the media. But this isn't his first run-in with the law. Back in 1996, he was convicted of 32 counts of animal Look at the condition of these dogs. They're as bad as the Blainville House of Horrors that took place in about 2003. Cruelty after authorities found sick dogs, minks, and foxes. Sick dogs, minks, and foxes. At the farm. <laughs> The SPCA, which is adamantly opposed to the fur industry, believes there are a lot of other problematic fur farms in Quebec. Three million animals in Canada are killed every year for their fur. Most of the fox come from Quebec. And the it's not just for the fur that these minxes and uh, fox are farmed. There's actually a meat market for mink meat. The SPCA says regulations are lax. Fur farming is not regularly inspected in the province of Quebec. There are no regular inspections done by any entity. It's That's because the SPCA does not follow up on 90% of the cases that are reported to the SPCA, and they don't really investigate anything. Even provincial government, it's simply on the basis of um, complaint. But the fur industry argues most farmers are clean, largely because that produces higher quality furs. Yep. That is the principle of any breeding. If you want to create a healthy animal and a healthy fur to sell, then it must be pretty much clean and good condition. However, in St. Jude, is it an isolated case? Perhaps. But fur is not the only market. You have to take very good care of the animals, or you simply can't produce the quality of fur that you need today for the world market. In fact, they say, fur is an environmentally friendlier choice. PETA and the activist groups say, you know, we don't need fur anymore, we have great synthetics, which is true. But they're mostly made out of petrochemicals. But the SPCA remains bothered that people continue to wear animal pelts. We make our gas to death, and that's considered currently acceptable and legal, and we're seeing... Again, the internet is uh, kind of choppy tonight. So I had problems recording this, but fur trim all over the place. Uh, we want people to know the reality of what the animals are, are forced to endure in order to make this unnecessary luxury item. If convicted, Jean-Luc Rodier could be sentenced to up to 18 months in prison, be fined up to $10,000 for each count, and be banned for life from owning animals. Rob Lurie, CTV News, St. Jude. So here we have another segment from CTV News. Cruelty against a fur farmer from St. Jude on the South Shore. Alana Devine is the director of the SPCA and she joins us now. Ms. Devine, we're hearing that the situation there was very, very bad and I'm sure you've already seen very bad. This must have been just horrendous for you to be that moved by that sad situation. Absolutely. Um, I've been at the SPCA for almost six and a half years and I have to say Again, choppy internet. Say the situation of these animals um, on a fur farm, and quite frankly, the situation of animals on fur farms across Canada is something that has moved me and upsetted me in a way that none of our other cases have. 
Ms. Devine, you know, people will say fur is just cruel, period. Was this situation worse than the average fur farm? It's really hard to say because, again, there are no um, provinces that have obligatory inspections on a regular basis. Um, clearly, we were able to take action. Few things I want to point out here. The SPCA doesn't know what the conditions are at other fur farms because they don't inspect them. Secondly, in the Fur Bearers podcast that was released back in uh, end of August, Sophie Gaillard, SPCA lawyer, claims that the ministry told Alana Devine that this was pretty much the average condition in all fur farms across Quebec. And that is what we saw in St. Jude. Now, one thing we notice here on this truck is it says, Viande non comestible. Why is it non comestible? Why can we not eat this meat? There's a reason for that, because the MAPAC does not approve this meat for human consumption, but there's a slaughterhouse in St. Jacques of Quebec. He's a mink farmer, and he's also listed as providing farm feed. Luckily, he has a brother in the same town who in turn sells some of that byproduct to the CKC breeders as raw meat. The raw meat diets that are often used to feed dogs. Because uh, certain of these animals were in circumstances that enabled us to apply the criminal code, which is quite difficult to apply and suffers from its own faults, unfortunately. So I can say yes, with respect to certain of these animals, certainly the situation I think was more severe, but what was really upsetting was to see these conditions that unfortunately... Again, more internet lag. Unfortunately, are common throughout fur farms in Canada and are legal and considered acceptable. Um, animals living in tire, tiny wire bottom cages without any enrichment. Situations we would never accept for dogs and cats. But this There's actually a warehouse in Rosemount that houses over 600 cats living in somewhat similar conditions. They're living in cages for the rest of their lives, just dying at the end of their cages. And that is acceptable for cats, according to the SPCA. Activists have been trying to shut down this rescue for at least 10 years, but nothing happened. There's a long lineage of family blood that affects the uh, situation, let's say. As you will also find out here in the Odier case in St. This is the fate of 2.5 million animals living in fur farms across Canada, all for the sake of producing an unnecessary luxury item that nobody needs. And were the conditions different from what you've seen in puppy mills? Can, is it fair to make that comparison between the fur farm and the puppy mills? Absolutely. This case is very similar for us to what happened in 2008 that led to huge changes um, in the provincial legislation and really talk all over the country. 2008 is when the uh, SPCA director, Pierre Bernardi, was fired from his position for misappropriation of funds and the SPCA at the time was also being boycotted by SPCA Montérégie for soliciting donations in a jurisdiction it did not belong. Fast forward to 2008 up to 2014, now the Val d'Or SPCA is boycotting the Montreal SPCA for the exact same thing. The Montreal SPCA is soliciting donations in uh, Gatineau and up north. Three of puppy mills. We realize that this is an issue that needs to be talked about province and countrywide. And yes, the situation and the conditions were very similar to puppy mills. And we really feel that if dogs and cats shouldn't be kept in these conditions and can't be legally kept in these conditions, neither. Why can the uh, ARN? provide cats in similar conditions.
to maintain foxes. And again, foxes are canid. They're very similar to dogs. And so we need to make that comparison and realize that it's absolutely unacceptable, absolutely unnecessary, and the public can act and do something about it by saying no to fur. And the SPCA can actually enforce the existing laws if it's so desired. You know, this man is a repeat offender. Um, you asked for a seizure back in August. It, it seems like we go through this over and over and over, that these repeat offenders keep coming back. Now they're saying, you know what, the maximum he can get is 18 months. Is he going to get that? Is he going to get the fines? I mean, it, it, it gets very frustrating for those of us who love Anna. Here's a quick answer that Alana, unfortunately, is unable to answer. The family name, Redier, has been in the fur business since the late 1800s. They pretty much had the royal monopoly for new friends. So there's a lot of issues about that. Absolutely. Again, as someone with a legal background um, and also an animal lover who works at the SPCA in both the inspection and advocacy department, I can tell you that no one is more frustrated by the state of the law than me. Um, I do. The reason the state of the law is in the condition that it is currently is because the authorities, the competent authorities who are mandated to enforce the laws, do not enforce the laws. So therefore, they just have weak jurisprudences to enforce the laws. But if the politicians saw the amount of struggle that went into these cases, new laws could be made. But currently, if we look at this, oh, wow. In the last 20 years, one fur farm in Quebec was charged. Do we really need more laws? We feel, however, that things have changed. The attitude of the public, we're seeing changes in jurisprudence. People are getting higher sentences. We're seeing a lot of lifetime prohibitions on animal ownership or having the care and custody of an animal. A prohibition is only good if it's federal. Look at uh, Paws R Us. They ran from Ontario when the uh, OSPCA was taking over and they fled to Quebec where it was a well-known fact that the MAPAC and the local SPCAs didn't enforce the laws. And really in this case, again, it's 18 months $10,000 fine per charge. There are six charges, um, and there is a possibility which they're... Internet lag once again. Wasn't in 1996 of a lifetime prohibition, and certainly um, if Monsieur Rodier is... Here, since 1996, the criminal code hasn't changed. It was... Rodier was charged under the criminal code. There's been no amendments in particular to the criminal code. What has changed is the jurisprudences because judges over the years become compassionate to the cause. But in order for them to be compassionate to the cause, they have to be presented the case. We certainly hope um, and feel that it would be a, a situation where a judge should consider a lifetime prohibition on having care, custody, or ownership of an animal. Okay. Well, thank you very much for taking time out to speak to us. And that is Alana Devine with the Montreal SPCA. So following up next, we're going to have the CBC. Hey, Francis, a Canadian first, a fur farmer in the Montagnagie is facing six charges of animal cruelty and neglect. Back in August, CBC News reported on the allegations of horrible conditions. Dozens of foxes and thousands of mink were living it at the farm. Now, as Sophie Crumlin reports, if found guilty, the owner could face a hefty fine and even time behind bars. The images sent shockwaves across the country. They were taken by the Montreal SPCA in May after it received an anonymous complaint against a farm in South Shore St. Jude. When CBC visited the farm in August, we found the animals in similar conditions. Now the SPCA's investigation has brought the farm owner before the courts. We received a complaint, we followed up and, and obviously found some pretty horrifying things and on the basis of what we found, we made the recommendation to the Crown to lay criminal charges. Owner Jean-Luc Rodier is facing six charges of animal cruelty and neglect. If convicted, the SPCA says Rodier could face up to 18 months in jail and fined up to $60,000. <laughs> he could also face a lifetime ban on owning animals. 
This isn't the first time Jean-Luc Pozzi has been charged with animal cruelty. In 1996, he was charged with 262 counts of cruelty. 200 plus counts of animal cruelty that were dismissed. He was never convicted for those charges, we find out. And uh, that's just unbelievable because turns out Madame Lamarche used to buy some dogs from une Madame Roy. Very interesting since Monsieur Gaudier is currently married to Madame Roy. A neglect of the dog he was breeding. He was found guilty on 32 counts of neglect, but the cruelty charges were dropped and he was allowed to keep operating. The SPCA is confident this time will be different. This is very similar to what happened in 2008 when, again, we had a criminal investigation um, into a puppy mill. Charges were laid, but for us, it really led to a broader issue of what is going on in these puppy mills. This case spurred the SPCA to launch a national anti-fur campaign. But Canada's Fur Council is adamant most in the industry treat their animals well. The government did come in, and this is in August. And in August and September, this was already being dealt with. But the SPCA all along has mixed up, it seems to me, the question of whether there was problems on this particular farm or whether they're against fur farming in general. Now, it's a known fact that the SPCA is against all fur farms in general. What we know is that the ministry told Alana Devine, according to Sophie Gaia, that all fur farms in Quebec are of the same Conditions of St. Jude. What, then that was the reason why the SPC, uh, the ministry did not want to seize because they told Alana, if we're to seize St. Jude, then we would have to be, we would have to enforce equality of the law, which would pretty much mean all fur farms would have to shut down. The court case against Fudzi is set for January. But this only CBC News, Montreal. The Quebec Court of Another interview to get from back CBC. To story now charges against a mink and fox fur farmer in St. Jude. Jean Luc Rosier could face up to 18 months in prison and thousands of dollars in fines for animal cruelty and neglect after an undercover investigation by the Montreal SPCA. Elena Devine is the director of animal advocacy at the SPCA, and she joins us now in studio. Thanks for coming in today. Now, first of all, the SPCA says this is the first time a fur farmer has been charged with animal cruelty in Canada. So why do you think the charges stuck in this case? Since Radier in 1996 had foxes and minks and dogs, and he was charged, why is it now that in 2014, it's the first time? That makes no sense. So that's, um, you know, due to, again, the great work of our inspections department. They are special constables and have the same powers of police. And I think also due to a changing mentality um, within the population and, and are fantastic. So the SPCA has the same powers as a peace officer, but yet they have a major conflict of interest because they oppose all fur farms, but the law allows fur farms. When will the police start selling drugs that they seize? A prosecutor that agreed to take the charges, but also I think it's very rare that these cases come to light in the first place. Um, there are no regular inspections taking place, very little in the way of letting... No inspections taking place, but yet their inspectors have the power to inspect. ...that protects these animals, so it's just sort of happenstance that we... Uh, we're given a complaint and followed up and we're able to proceed and recommend that charges be laid. So this is a case of fur farmer, uh, but in the broader sense of animal cruelty in Quebec, we have a terrible reputation in this province. Why, why is it so bad? Why is it so bad in Quebec versus the rest of Canada and Europe and beyond? You know, I, it's a great question and I get asked that quite often and I wish I had a direct answer because I've solved it already. Mm -hmm. um, we certainly are behind with respect to legislation. So once again, uh, Quebec was ranked last in the Animal Legal Defense Provincial ranking. Uh, we do have a lot of problems with our legislation. That's because we have every branch of our Quebec government that's corrupted. From the municipal government to the OSBLs that are mandated to be governmental 
It's a mess. ...and I think, you know, we're the last province in Canada to adopt animal welfare legislation. It initially only applied to dogs and cats, now applies to some other animals, but we still have a lot of work to do in terms of our legislation and enforcement, so... Again, provincial legislation is useless because the abusers just skip town, skip province. I, I think things are changing now. Uh, the public is speaking out. People were horrified by puppy mills when we first brought this issue really into the limelight in 2008, and I now think people are horrified by what's going on with respect to fur farming. And so I think we are going to hopefully see some positive changes um, come out of you know this these criminal charges and also the large, larger issues that you brought up. Well, the provincial government, it says that new legislation is in the works. They say that they're going to deem animals sentient beings so that they have feelings as opposed to just property. Do you think that will change, uh, will help change, foster change in puppy mills and that kind of Animals under a criminal code are already defined as perishable items. And you can be charged for animal cruelty. So yes, the animals are property for insurance purposes and liability purposes. But you cannot abandon an animal and you can't cut them up without causing what the law defines as unnecessary pain or suffering. And a lot of activists have been saying, oh, you can chop up an animal without any risks. Sure, Luca Magnota was able to do so, but why? Because the SPCA didn't do its job. They didn't care at the time. They could have saved a human at the time. Situation? I think it's going to depend on exactly how the legislation is structured. Again, we have to remember that a civil code is separate from the criminal code um, or penal legislation. So there could be changes in the civil code um, that really are symbolic more than anything, and I think that could... Symbolic. We have animal activists that are changing symbolical laws. Do you see a problem here? It have a bit of an effect and certainly would change the way that we continue and the justice system continues to think about animals. Um, but there are certainly some other recommendations that the SPCA and my colleague Meta Gayar have made um, to uh, the Minister of Agriculture, who's actually spearheading this project to change the status of animals that could take it even a step further, um, ensuring that animals have certain invaluable rights. Um, again, it, it really depends on what option they take, but I do think just the fact that we're talking about it is fantastic. And all they really want to do is give more rights to the SPCA to seize an animal. Because if they remo remove the fact that the animal is no longer property, the Quebec Charter of Human Rights protects the enjoyment of property. That's the real issue behind the change. It does bring about some hope for the future of animals in our province. Just very, very quickly, just a few seconds left. Is there room for fur farming in Quebec? Absolutely not. I think there's no room for fur farming in Canada and the public when they understand what this entails and the suffering these animals have to endure for a non-necessary luxury item are simply going to decide to say no to fur. And you have a lot of Jews in Montreal who actually wear the fur hat. That's not just necessarily a luxury item. It's a religious, cultural item. Anna Devine, thank you so much for coming in. Thanks for having me. And we're going to finish up with TVA in French. They pretty much had nothing good to say. Dans Montérégie, le propriétaire d'une ferme de bisons et de renards qui fait face à des accusations de cruauté et de négligence envers les animaux. C'est une première au pays. Les groupes de défense Again, he says it's the first in the country. ce type d'élevage. La ferme Zizon JNJ de Saint-Dieu dans Montérégie se spécialise dans l'élevage d'animaux à fourrure. Son propriétaire a déjà été reconnu coupable de cruauté et de négligence envers des chiens en 1996. Cette fois, il fait face à six nouveaux chefs d'accusation envers 10 000 bisons, 90 renards et deux chiens. L'accusé risque une peine de 18 mois de prison et une amende de 10 000 dollars pour chaque accusation. On pourrait aussi lui interdire à vie d'avoir le contrôle ou la garde d'un animal. C'est une demi-victoire pour la SPCA de Montréal. C'est certain, on est très content qu'il y aura des accusations portées dans ce dossier-là, mais c'est de vraiment euh, faire parler, euh, faire éduquer la publique euh, et les consommateurs par rapport aux pratiques qui sont considérées comme généralement acceptables ou reconnues par l'industrie. Chaque année, 100 millions d'animaux dans le monde sont tués pour leur fourrure, 3 millions au Canada. 
leurs conditions d'élevage sont qualifiées d'inhumaines. Peu importe s'ils sont domestiqués ou non, le fait qu'ils sont gardés à vie dans un cage à fente légère est mis à mort par l'électrocution anale, encore légale. Plusieurs groupes. Yes. Anal electrocution is technically legal, but the American Fur Council Association recommends gassing the animal over ele electrocution. And guess who owns the patent for the device to ele electrocute these animals? The University of Montreal has the patent and makes money on this cruelty. Qui vise à mieux informer la population du sort de ces bêtes. Il faut vraiment qu'ils font la connexion entre les deux. Ils comprennent que la garniture euh, de fourreau vient d'un animal qui a souffert et malheureusement, une grande partie de la souffrance est encore légale. La SPCA et d'autres groupes militent pour l'interdiction de toutes les fermes d'élevage d'animaux à fourrure au Canada. D'autres pays, le Royaume-Uni, l'Autriche, la Croatie notamment, l'ont déjà fait. André Duchamp, TVA Nouvelle, Montréal.